Hello. So it's me, Gregory, again. Um, if you've joined a bit late, don't worry. You've missed my welcome, but that's fine. You'll find everything you need to know um, if you're on Venulus looking at the info desk. Um, and so we've got our first talk. This is Ilya talking. Um, there are lots of editors of OpenStreetMap. He's going to talk about how they've changed or how they could change and maybe not even have a map on the map editor. Um, so I'll, we'll uh, watch his talk and then he should be available for questions. So go ahead and ask questions during the talk. Um, but over to Ilya's mapless map editor's talk. Hello, I'm Ilya Zverev and I love OpenStreetMap. Not in the least because of uh, its quality, its completeness. Uh, like, you know, 12 years ago, there was this website, Best of OSM, that showcased exemplary mapping in OpenStreetMap. Like cities and areas that are mapped like outstandingly. And by nowadays, that website is basically obsolete because the level of mapping is showcased. Nowadays, it's an expected base level of mapping for towns and there is an open street map. And that's great. That's because uh, in 16 years, we did uh, many tools that help us fill the blank spots to improve the map. Our main editors, ID and JOSM, are state of the art. They allow mapping very fast. And we have specialized tools like Rapid. With a couple clicks of a button, it will fill all the missing roads and buildings. And Street Complete, that focuses on missing attributes and makes you add them so that map is complete on all layers. We are exceptional in filling the blind spots and making the map. But in the past 16 years, we uh, still haven't solved another issue, and that's how to make keep a map fresh. The our map is losing its blank spots, but also it's very fast getting obsolete. I'm pretty sure that in your vicinity there are some restaurant or amenity that has been mapped uh, like ten years ago and long closed then, but it's still on the map. Because finding this, uh, keeping the map updated, is much harder than uh, just drawing everything from scratch. So, how can we do it? Did we try to fix that? Or, of course, I, I thought about this a lot. And the main obvious thing is how to keep the map updated is to make some focused application or website. For example, uh, Focus just on roads, on just on land use, or just on shops and amenities. Because if you do not focus, then it will be much easier to just delete everything in the map from scratch. Our editors are not suited for actually updating the data, editing it. Uh, and I had an idea for shops and amenities to write something like I mean, the editor which will show you interactive map with markers to click on and. Uh, options to update data. data. I didn't do it, but I helped make Maps Me Editor, uh, which is basically that. And it's outdoor editor, so people will take it with them. They will see the difference between map and their surroundings. Did it help keep the map fresh? Not really, because people are mostly adding missing stuff missing shops and venues, but not editing existing ones. We still have a lot of stale data on the map. We have a lot of focused apps, but something it feels is mi still missing. So what is it? Maybe we're not looking at this site. Maybe it's the map itself that's the obstacle. Like for the past couple of years, uh, I was looking at interactive maps and thinking that that's not a good user interface. 
adding interactive map nowadays is very simple. You just take leaflet or open layers or map or JLGS or Kepler or DEG or any of mobile SDK, you drop it and add some markers and there's interactive map. That's great. But simplest answer is not always, actually it's almost never the best answer. Because people actually do not need interactive maps. Like people don't need layers, people don't need, don't come to your website to pan the map around or uh, zoom in or zoom out. That's not what they're there for. They are at the website for answers. They do not need to see uh, bus locations on a map. They want to know when their bus will come. They don't need a weather map. They need to know when the rain will end. They don't need traffic map. They need to know how much time they will spend in traffic. And driving directions and map of nearby restaurants are better served as a picture, not as a map, because picture can be saved. Picture can be sent to a messenger. It's much better. But interactive map is simpler to develop <laughs> for some reason. So I put two and two together and thought maybe maps are what preventing us from uh, make a good map editor. Can a map editor be done without a map? And well, yes, of course they can. When you think of updating the map without an editor, first thing that comes to mind are imports. Imports are like a great example of updating the map. Uh, you don't need a map for imports. Uh, you only need scripts and data. You put scripts and data and upload the result to OpenStreetMap and the map is better, the map is more fresh if done right. But imports are not for everybody, there are very few people who can do imports and even fewer that can do it right. But it's an option. It gives us ideas of what can be done. Uh, more common editors without map a raw editor or later uh, level zero. They download raw data from OpenStreetMap and present it as text. And you edit a map like you edit a text. You don't need interactive map. If you have some data in the database with coordinates, it doesn't mean you have to plot it. You can just print it. Editing attributes is, attributes is important. And again, it gives us an idea of what can be done. If you work only with text, you can easily embed the editor, for example, in osm.org. You won't need to run ID for editing tags, or you can do it from command line and stuff. So editors focused on attributes don't need a map. Like OSM to Wikidata, it edits only Wikidata tags, uh, uh, it finds values automatically and just uh, prompts you a couple questions before it uploads it to OpenStreetMap. It's very easy to use it. It doesn't require a map and you can make a map better with just a couple clicks with a very focused editor. Uh, I could mention other editors that don't require a map like Derivista. Derivista is this amazing one that uses mapillary uh, and instead of using a map as an abstraction to real world, you just see the photo of the real world and you click on the photo. You just skip all this map business. And there's a, a next step over Derivista is 360 editor from Swimic that lost a micro grant last year. Uh, it also sh presents you 360 imagery and overlays it with OpenStreetMap data and you can do everything on it. It's proper map editor, but it's very focused. But focused not on some layer like tags or attributes, but it focused uh, uh, in location. It's very local. You look around you and you spot things that are missing on the map and add them. So it's mostly for micro mapping, you, you, you could say. And there's map swipe. If I could, I just uh, ask for a show of hands who has used Mapswipe, but I'm pretty sure uh, almost everybody watching this 
have seen MapSwipe. It, it is a great app. If you haven't seen it, basically presents you with imagery and asks you to tap on places that have buildings or roads in them. And you might argue that that's not an editor. You just tap on imagery. But editor doesn't need to be like, uh, the, do the whole path of editing. You can do one, just one step. For example, with walking papers, there is two-step mapping. First step is you, you fill the walking papers. Second step, you go home to JOSM and update the data. And, and map swipe is the perfect first step for humanitarian mapping, for mapping very large territories, because it saves a lot of time, large amount of time, uh, by focusing on places that are actually need to be mapped. mapped. And Again, this mapless editor, because it doesn't have an interactive map, just pictures, gives us an idea of how can we use it to our advantage, how can we use it to update the map. Because, for example, uh, occasionally we get fresh imagery in our editors. We could make like something like map swipe, present this fresh imagery, or overlay opposite map data on top of it, and in just a couple of hours, uh, find everything that has been changed. New roads, new buildings, or demolished buildings. And then we're focusing on just these changes, we could update the map. What's great with map swipe is uh, that it is very engaging. Like uh, a thing that Steve Koz did many years ago comes to mind. Uh, editor of building entrances. It just presented pictures of buildings and you had to click on entrances to these buildings. And again, it is, this was one-click mapping and we as OpenStreetMap community spent a lot of time clicking on buildings. I personally mapped like hundreds of these. It was very engaging and you immediately saw the result. And looking at these examples of mapless editors, uh, there are some ideas that we can take out of that uh, to updating opposite map data. First, we need to make something focused that didn't change. Also, uh, the map may be something we don't need. And finally, we have to make more outdoor apps, because outdoor apps is what opposite map is lacking at the moment outdoor editors. Like, take a look at Street Complete. In just a couple of years, it raised itself to fourth place on most used editors in terms of number of users. Uh, and the second place is taken by Maps.me. And that's basically all. The, these are like the only uh, two focused editors in the top 10. We need to have more of these. Uh, we could have, I don't know, public transportator. Because editing public transport right now is very hard. You usually open an interactive map and see all the routes, all the stops. You can click on the stop and look at its attributes and fix them. You need to edit relations, sort through stops and platforms and routes. And no public transport scheme. It is very, very hard. And it doesn't match my outdoor experience when I just walk to a bus stop and uh, I see a stop name, stop location, which I could just add in an app, and I see a list of routes that go through this stop. And if I'm lucky uh, for each of these routes, I have a list of stops. I could just enter these numbers and be done with it. I don't have to map entire routes from scratch. Because you don't expect somebody to come to OpenStreetMap and map the entire town. But you expect people to map entire public transport roads. And of course, uh, the holy grail of OpenStreetMap is keeping shops and amenities updated. They still aren't. And uh, accidentally, I had to think of that half a year ago when I was making a telegram bot for my neighborhood, uh, which is bas was basically a directory of all the shops and amenities. 
it was made for searching but also i had to take a database of shops and amenities from somewhere and opa street map quality was very poor i had to research it on my own and i couldn't use any opa street map uh, apps or editors because i had very limited time and i had if i used opa street map editor i would need to do two steps of mapping like first collecting the data second mapping and it's not fun at all so i had to make some one-step editor for shops and amenities and i did in the same environment as uh, my directory as a telegram bot telegram is a messenger popular in russia and belarus it doesn't do very much it allows you to exchange, exchange text, pictures, and allows you to click on buttons. And that's all. It's a very limited interface, no interactive maps. So how would you do an editor in that environment? It turns out that if you iterate and if you focus on just one thing, then it's possible. And not only possible, it was very efficient. Of course, I had just one person for my target audience, myself, so I optimized uh, the heck out of the app. And it really worked. In, uh, on some days, I uh, collected uh, up to 100 shops and amenities. And by collecting, not just adding locations and names, but uh, making several photos and typing phones and websites and instagram by hand and going inside and talking to owners sometimes so a lot of work for each shop and i did it very fast if you want to know more there's a fourth dem presentation uh, about the entire process and after that presentation the two questions i got the most were first I, am i gonna export the data to OpenStreetMap and second, why not use OpenStreetMap for storage in the first place? Uh, of course the data can be exported, it's just another import. Imports are hard, but it could be done. Uh, maybe I'll do it, I'm not sure. As for OpenStreetMap storage, I had my ready-made answers. Uh, because OpenStreetMap has got lots of issues with license, with volatility, with slow API, with metadata, I couldn't can store photos, for example, or keywords in OpenStreetMap, uh, and schemas because my tagging in the app was a bit different. So generally, yeah, why store data in OpenStreetMap when you can store it uh, outside? But the question has stayed with me. Now I have moved to another city. Uh, where people don't use Telegram and doing ag again all this Telegram stuff would be weird. I need something else. A couple of months ago, I finally understood how the editor for OpenStreetMap for shops and amenities would look. And I started to research and do it. And actually today I expected to announce <laughs> the editor, but uh, Flutter is decay. Uh, is a bit more complex <laughs> than I expected. So I'm working on it, but uh, hopefully in August uh, you would be able to use it to map your surroundings. And now I can show you some drawings. Like the entire interface uh, of the app uh, would be just a list of shops and amenities near you. The app gets your locations and sorts all the stuff uh, by distance. Uh, so, when you see a shop, you open the list, and if you don't see it in the list, you click uh, plus button and enter all the data, like name and open hours and whether it takes cards, and send it to OpenStreetMap. If you do see a shop in the list, you double check its open hours, it still works, uh, and if nothing's changed, you click on a check mark. And that check mark gets sent to OpenStreetMap as a check date tag. And that tag is basically the most important thing. It shows you when the object has been surveyed. And on the next day, when you return to finish your job, you will know which uh, amenities you have seen and which you haven't. 
And that's all. Basically two pages with the list, with the fields uh, that allow you to keep your neighborhood uh, map uh, fresh, updated and curated. Uh, and one thing that enables it is getting rid of interactive map. You don't need to click markers. When you have to click markers, you are doing something wrong. Of course, there will be uh, more features like uh, working offline and uh, saving some metadata like photos uh, and uh, filtering by floor because in shopping centers you would, would want to uh, survey one floor after another and not see everything uh, in one list. But in general, that's it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm currently working on it. Uh, I show it in August. If you want to help, uh, mail me. If you have any other ideas, mail me. So, to reiterate, OpenStreetMap has an issue with data becoming obsolete. And to solve that issue, we need to make more focused outdoor apps. And the one thing that can improve these apps is removal of interactive maps because they're inefficient and we can do better just using text and buttons and lists and stuff no maps so try to think how current apps can be improved and if you have any ideas then mail me i am Zverev and have a nice day bye Hello, so um, that's the end of the talk. Unfortunately, Ilya's not joined into the uh, video call with me. Um, we do have some issues with the questions because apparently only I have the button to ask a question. Um, for future talks, so I've been doing it a bit now. I've tried, if you ask your question in the chat, I'll copy it into the question tab and then you can um, you can kind of uh, vote on them there. So we've got some good questions. Um, I would now normally ask Ilya these uh, questions, but as he's not here, um, he normally is around in the conference. Um, he potentially might go into the post-talk chat room if you want to ask him these questions. Um, but there's been some good ones um, about Google Maps advantages, um and uh editing declining um obviously Ilya isn't here so i can't ask them all out uh but that was a great talk and very nice to have it in the um in the um woods um so yeah um if you are giving a talk you should have an email with a link to join um a special big blue button session if you can do that before the talk ends um, or even when it starts, then I know you're here. Um, but for now, I'm going to stop there and we've got a couple of minutes to for our next talk. If you want to chat with yourselves you can about um, mapless map editors, you can move into the post-talk chat room um, and Ilya might join you. That's, that's me.